particle physics is a special field of, of biology, but very close connected to the real physics. Uh, real physics uh, uses formula and many calculations, so a lot of mathematics. And it tries to describe uh, in physical terms biological processes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy Very to come good. back again for the... Very good. Yeah. The biophotonics is, is especially the field of light. So we look at what light means in living organisms. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, light intensity goes up in an organism that is under stress or in a diseased state, yes. This is, this is, let's say, you see what the fluctuations are, mm -hmm. and hidden in these fluctuations is some sort of a language, mm -hmm. and so you have to do very um, specific techniques mm -hmm. to um, to get all the information out of these data. So it's mm -hmm. pure spontaneous emission which suddenly decreases if uh, a treatment takes place. So this is, this because this is the photon emission in the period before the treatment took place and it is completely flat. And then you see that in the period during treatment you see a decrease in uh, photon emission. You see it goes down, regularly goes down yeah. Yeah. and then it remains at, at that low level also in the 10 minutes after the treatment so there is so there therefore you can see there is a close a, a very a strong effect of the treatment otherwise you could never see this regular uh, decrease yeah. it's a very nice experiment yeah. Yeah, yeah. intensity and the fluctuation change and I think that is the most important observation. They change um, when uh, Alex Orbito is uh, treating. Do they change systematically in the same way? Yes, they always change systematically in the same way. Back to light. Back to light. That, that is the place of the scientists <laughs> that I go before, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. and now to examine about the energy. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, he is very familiar with the whole yeah. setting. You must not sneeze once you are in under the <laughs> No, you're right. <laughs> okay. So, okay. so you were like this? Yeah. yeah. And Alex, you were like here? Thank you very much. Uh, and I feel the current. Mm -hmm. okay, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> because before it's very, very dark, you know? Yes. yes. But now I, we are very happy that the scientists allow you to go inside. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy too. <laughs> yeah. So good. Okay. And both of these data um, support the idea that, that uh, the energy status of the of the treated person uh, becomes uh, in a better uh, state. We are just at the beginning of, uh, of, of a description of um, what happens 
if these uh, psychological processes take place. And, um, making a description does not give any explanation. So just by having healers uh, cooperating with us uh, leads uh, hopefully to a design for further studies. The first big study is uh, made by Dr. Soitemann from Germany. She was studying uh, 1,200 patients for one year after they were cured in the Philippines. And they found a an, an, uh, percentage of 19% of positive uh, healing. 90 or 90? 90. 90. There was a trial in, in Italy and they were talking, it was tried for trickery. If there are results, so there can be trickery. If it is real what he is doing, but no patient is curing, so then he is a tricker, even if it is real. So the question of reality of this in a scientific sense is not very important. Important for me were the results. So I was collecting results from the whole world and uh, I didn't find 90% but it was very nearby and I was selecting uh, very uh, difficult patients with an infaust prognosis from the official uh, medical uh, staff. So it was normally um, uh, cancers with uh, metastasis. And so I found that it was uh, a really sur surprising uh, results of, uh, of this uh, type of uh, healing.